Hey, I'm Bruce Wham, and in my 20 years of experience with ministry, I've seen deaf ears, blind eyes, and broken bones instantaneously healed. I've seen a number of other incredible miracles, and I've experienced the Lord move in profound, powerful ways. And I'm going to teach you how you can do miracles. Yes, you, even if you're a cessationist, you might be New Age, you might be Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim. I'm going to teach you how you can do miracles. Uh, life. Now let me clarify one thing. I said that no matter where you're starting, you might be New Age, you might be Hindu, you might be some other thing other than Christian, but I'm still going to teach you how to do miracles. I do miracles in the name of Jesus, and I believe that the only true miracles are done in the name of Jesus. So if you're not born again, if you don't know the Lord, then you're not going to be doing miracles. I will guarantee you there is nobody out there doing the kind of miracles that I've seen done in the name of Buddha. Muhammad is not healing people of deaf ears and blind eyes. Allah is not restoring sight to the blind. He's not curing deafness. Nobody in the name of Muhammad is doing miracles. And I'll tell you this, if you're new age and you're using powerful vibes or energy or crystals or some other form of supposed healing or some other form of miraculous power, maybe good vibes or some other thing, those are false miracles. I'm going to come right out the gate and say immediately, that you may or may not have seen some actual results somehow by doing some other technique. In fact, witchcraft is a real thing. There are witch doctors out there. There are people who practice witchcraft and magic and they have spells and they do other kind of nonsense that is not authorized by the Lord. And they may or may not see some results, but those results are definitely demonic. They're not from the Lord. They're not good. And even if there seems to be some good coming from it, it's only because demons are playing a little game where they're manipulating us into worshiping them or thinking that we can get power in some method outside of Christ. That being said, I will go ahead and address the title of my video, How to Do a Miracle, and say that there is no step one, two, three on how to perform a miracle. If I were to sit here and tell you step one, two, three, how to do miracles, that would itself be witchcraft. And that's not what I'm into. That doesn't honor the Lord. God is not a vending machine. We don't input A, B, and C, and we get D. That's not how the Lord works. He's not a form to figure out. We're not here as Christians to try to determine what are the spiritual laws of physics and game the system, try to manipulate the power around us. God is not the force that we wield. He's not some impersonal power that we can manifest or that we can tap into. Vibes are not a real thing. Yes, molecules vibrate, but we people don't operate on that level. We operate within a spiritual world. And for me to come in here and say, you can do A, B, C, and get D, that's witchcraft. That's a magic spell, and that is not authorized of the Lord. Some people treat God like He's a cosmic Santa Claus to whom we bring our wish list. Other people treat the Holy Spirit like it's an it. It's a thing, an object, or a source of power that we tap into or something. That's blasphemous. That's not honoring to God. Witchcraft is not forbidden in the Bible because it doesn't work. But because it's an attempt to do things in a humanistic level or at a demonic level, there are such things as satanic rituals. They put in A, B, C. That's a formula. That's a spell. And, and there's a magic potion that's got ingredients A, B, C. And following those kind of rituals may actually have an outcome. I've been in countries where witchcraft is real. People actually practice it. People actually get results. But they're getting results not so much because they figured out how, man, how to manipulate the world around them as it is that demons are cooperating with them to give results and to do things that give a false perception of power. The devil is nobody's ally. The devil is nobody's friend. Even someone who thinks they're working for the devil and doing spells and witchcraft and things for the, for the devil or for the demons, those people are greatly deceived because the devil doesn't love anybody. He doesn't team up with or partner with anybody. He only ever uses and enslaves people. And those who are captured in this deception of doing a ritual to get power or doing some sort of spell to achieve a result, those people are trapped in the depths of sin. And it's really, really sad. God has infinite power, real power. Now, just to give a clarification, when I'm talking about you doing miracles and me doing miracles, it's not our superpower that we wield. 
This is not an on-command, on-demand ability. It's not a natural talent that we just possess. Some people have, some people don't. No, we're not talking X-Men, superheroes. We're not doing that kind of thing either. This is not just some sort of thing that you, you have a gift and you can just use it how you please. We're actually called to serve the Lord and to abide by His standards and to operate within His kingdom. Now, God may give someone an ability to do a miracle who's not quite serving Him how they should, but it's only because God has His reasons for doing what He does. So even a Christian who's doing a miracle, and they genuinely are trying to serve the Lord, but they stumble, and maybe they have some bad theology in some area, or maybe they're confused, or maybe they even fall into sin, they stumble, they may still be showing results in that fashion as well. But it's not because God approves of those evil things in their life. It's only because God, through His infinite wisdom and His purposes, has chosen to use that person. So, I pray that you want to be used by the Lord, that you want to increase your ability to build His kingdom, and to see people receive a touch from heaven, and to see tangible results of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's my job, and that's my goal. And so when I'm teaching you things that you can do to prepare yourself and to be in a position to do miracles, it's not a magic formula. The name of Jesus is not somehow a magic word. We do things in the name of Jesus because we do things that represent Jesus. It's not like your prayer doesn't count if you don't say the name Jesus, but it's because the man Christ Jesus, God in the flesh, who came to die on the cross to forgive our sins, also came to purchase for us life and life abundant. And He wants to manifest His kingdom right here on the earth in a way that will give us real results but we also understand that the fullness of His kingdom is not going to manifest until He returns. So even though I've seen tons of miracles, I myself have not always gotten the result for my prayer. I've struggled with health problems of my own and didn't instantly heal my own self. There's been times that I prayed and didn't see a result. So I'm not here as the expert who's always batted a thousand and I'm going to tell you how to score a thousand, you know, to always score 100% and never mess up. That's not the point of today's video either. So just to recap, step number one is that there are no step one, two, three in that sense. We have to approach this knowing that God is good, He wants to do miracles, and we can be His hands and feet. God could have chosen to do everything completely on His own without our interaction and without our participation, but He wants friends. Think about when God invited Adam to name all the animals. God didn't need Adam's help naming the animals as if God didn't know who they were or what they were. God invited Adam to participate. God often, still today, shows up in person. Jesus will manifest himself. He'll appear in a vision or in person in places in the Middle East, for example, to Muslims who are getting born again, they realize this is the Messiah, not just a prophet, but God in the flesh. I'm going to worship Him and repent from sins, repent from the false religion of Islam. I'm going to get saved. They're getting born again. God does that still today, but primarily, primarily He wants to use you and me as His hands and feet, as His partners to accomplish things on the earth. Now, sidebar, if you are a cessationist, I mentioned that this video is still for you. I'm not going to go into every single argument and break down all the apologetics on why miracles are real and why they are for today, but I will say this. A lot of the disagreement that some uh, cessationists produce is based on the idea that they don't want to abuse the gifts of the Spirit. They don't want to see people um, treat the Lord as if He is that cosmic Santa Claus and we just wield powers of our own without His help or intervention. So if the wording bothers you, let me phrase it this way. God can move at any point, anytime He chooses, and He oftentimes does choose through us being willing and ready to pray for someone and to offer a touch of compassion to someone. He oftentimes does do miracles. Again, I just want to reassure you that I'm not talking about a person having a superpower and I'm not saying that uh, on demand we do something outside or apart from God. No, of course not. But I do want to challenge you with this. It's not enough to say that God can do anything, but He really won't. 
We've got to believe that he still does do interactive, miraculous things in people's lives. Once people realize this is not about a superstar Christian doing powerful things on his own to get attention or to uh, hoodwink people or get money out of them or whatever, once you know it's about God's glory, giving Him the praise, letting Him do His work through us, a lot of cessationists have a lot less problem with it at that point. I'm not talking about doing something that will rewrite the Bible. But then again, there is no verse in the Bible that says that after the Bible is written, there will be no more miracles. Of course God does miracles. The problem most cessationists have is that they think it's all about the person doing the miracles, and I'm not one of those guys. I uh, definitely want the Lord to get the focus. I want Him to get the glory, and I think you do too. 